Hey guys, I'm Brian. And I'm Terry. And welcome back to the Forest Farm Project. Today we're at Terry's old house again. We got all our cabinet boxes built finally, and now we're gonna show you how we built our face frames to cover these cabinets up. Let's get to it. Let's do it. start out you got to get proper dimensions we always find that a stick rule is the most accurate way to go and you want to make sure that you are flat here well if you use your finger it uh it could have some discrepancy there you might be pushing hard you might not be pushing hard enough you might have somebody helping you that don't know how to set it we just take a block lay it flat on that surface that's what you want to measure to you can't miss it there then you can get a nice accurate measurement exactly so once you've got your measurements, you've got to take into account the fact that you need overhang on each side. Yeah, for instance, in the corner of a, our kitchen, um, where the sheetrock meets in a corner, you'd think that's square, but it's not because they put the tape in the corner. They put mud, then they put the tape in the corner, and then they feather the mud on each side. So there's a taper there, and that can cause your cabinet. If you want it set just like this, it might be a little bit like that in the back because it, that mud in that corner kick this thing over it won't let it go against the wall yep you know tightly so because of that on the sides against a wall you need to leave a little about a quarter inch some people might leave more check your corner if it looks like it's way out of whack you might want to leave more than a quarter inch you, know, yep. you might want to leave a half inch uh, and then you want to leave a quarter inch between cabinets as well so you can work the cabinets and get them squared up in case there's any issues there you have a little bit of leniency in uh how the, how you mm. position the cabinets also, if this cabinet we're going to be, it's not, this is going to be between a wall and a sink cabinet. So we'll bond these together through the face frames, and we'll show you that when we do it. And then this edge is going to be against that corner. Um, but if this were a cabinet that was on the end of the cabinets, you want to um, determine, do I want that uh, face frame to be flush with this edge? Or, you know, like just straight on the edge? Or maybe I want to shift it this way a little bit and have a little eighth of an inch reveal or just we're probably going to go like a sixteenth yeah, on the 16th. edge so that'll give it a, a little cleaner look if you try to get these exactly flush this side panel better be perfectly straight and if it's not you need to let this overhang to the highest point and then you're going to have to sand it but if there's any little curve there that's going to show up when you stand and look at the front of that cabinet if you let this overhang just a fraction then if the side panel is a little bit wonky which most wood is you want to think it's perfect but it's not sheet goods are not perfectly straight no so if you if you let this edge hang over now you're you're looking at this edge of this rather than the edge of this which could be curved in and out just if it's a just 30 hair. second or a 16th some people would never notice that we walk into a place where like that's crooked yeah <laughs> we can't help it that's just the way we are i guess being around construction yep so we're going to have about a 16th of an inch reveal on any of those type of cabinets. Yeah. And now on these lower cabinets, the face frame down here, we're going with a, a two inch uh, styles and rails. And um, on the bottom, we got our top flush right here. There's a quarter inch reveal inside. Again, if you make this down there flush with that shelf, unless that's perfectly straight which for us this is straight it looks good but some of them may have a little bit of a hump to them who and knows not just a hump you can see the joint between the face frame and the cabinet if it's down flush right it's not going to seal up perfectly square all the way across so if you leave a little reveal on the inside it hides that joint exactly so you want to do that and this will be smaller based on how much reveal you want and how thick of a base cabinet bottom you have yeah so and you're only taking this face frame obviously down to there. You got your toe kick down here that uh, doesn't have any of this. If you were doing a top cabinet, your bottom rail would need to be thicker so that you can hide any under cabinet lighting and keep everything nice and flush across the bottom all the way across the front of the cabinets. Exactly. We've got a three quarter base on these cabinets. Our whole framework is three quarter. So we're using a two inch board. We're gonna have about a quarter inch reveal on the inside. Uh, uh, eighth eighth of an inch, inch reveal yeah. on the inside and an inch and a quarter uh, hiding below underneath that way we can hide our one inch under cabinet lights yeah we can put our under cabinet lights under there and when you walk up all you're going to see is cabinet and light shining down yep. which is going to be really nice okay for the lumber we're using we bought uh one by eight 14 foot long poplar because that's what we could find and it ended up yep. being the best stuff it was at ken's supply yeah and 
it worked out best because for it, us, yeah, for us, if it works out like we've got it laid out, we literally use exactly solid boards. We didn't have to cut like a foot off of another board, so it may work out really nice. Yeah, yeah. And one nice thing about doing it this way, since we don't have a repeatable stop or a sled, we are going to get because we're doing two inches for our rails and this is seven and a quarter wide we can get three rails out of this so we can cut it with a little scrap yeah we can cut it to its exact length for whatever cabinet we're doing and then when we rip our strips it is going to be exactly the same for all three pieces and it's crucial that you get these three boards the exact same length if you had these cut down to your two inch and these are like an inch or whatever uh inch and a half um if you already had those cut and long boards and then you started chopping the lengths, unless you get every one of these cuts exactly the same dimension, this, this face frame is going to be doing like that and it's going to be awful. Yeah. But like he said, by getting this cut to the dimension you need first and then rip them out of there, they're all going to have the exact same cut on both ends. They are going to, th th this thing went together, it's square as could be. We they're just, fitting perfectly. Yeah, we put the... We did the Craig system on the back, and it pulls it together nice and tight. It's rock solid. Straight as arrow. Yeah. I, I have overwhelmed. Yeah, it's working Excellent. out really well. Yeah. So let's get to building these. These are going to be for a 36-inch cabinet, so they're going to be bigger than this one. And We're going to time-lapse ripping this stuff up, and then we'll be back in a little bit. See you in a minute. Alright, we got all our boards ripped down to size. Brian popped holes in them with a pocket hole. Craig, uh, K5. That thing is a lifesaver for time. It's yes, sir. so easy to do. And our face frames, our cabinets, everything has come out straight. Your cabinets are going to be straight if your cuts are straight. Make sure that your chop saw has a 90 degree angle to the table. Even though Ma it reads zero, it may not be zero. Exactly. Measure it with a square, whatever you have to do. Cut boards and check and see if they're square and if they're not, keep adjusting it until it's square. If you don't get it square, if this board was cut off a little bit, then that's, you know, if both of these were off like that, then that's going to go like that. It's not going to go straight. So you've got to have these things cut straight. This, this system will create as quality a cabinet as the wood that you use it with based on how you cut it. Yeah. How you cut it is based on how well, how well you set your saws up and tune them up before you go. And a saw needs to tune up. Even after you've been using it, you should check from time to time. They can get out of whack. The table saw, we had to adjust, the, the blade was not straight with the, uh, the table. miter slots on the table. So yep. we had to get that straightened out, had to pull the side apart, take some bolts loose, slide it over a little bit, and get it squared up. Mm -hmm. And then you got to get your fence squared up to the blade. If you don't, things aren't going to be straight. Chop saw, you, and you need to make sure your blade is vertical. Same on the chop saw, vertical blade, square to the fence. You know, Perpendicular to the fence. That too, <laughs> perpendicular. <laughs> So take some time and set your equipment up and life is going to be much easier. I can't yeah. imagine putting these together. We just set it here, stuck them together, and everything is fitting tight. You can't beat that. Now, the, now, one thing, wood is wood, and it is not a perfect item. When you take an a 8-inch board or even a 2, 3-inch board, whatever, if you rip the side of that board off, we just had one a while ago, it literally looked like a banana when it came out of there. Sometimes the wood just wants to give and when you cut it you relieve that tension between them two pieces and it'll literally one might curl they might both curl yep this board is about a sick meh, 30 second out there it's uncommon most of them have been straight as an arrow yep. this one one had the other side of that gave out like that 
But when we put it together and we pull it square, it's going to be fine. So it's going to lock down just fine. Everything's going to be good. You're going to have little discrepancies here and there sometimes, and when you do, you just make you make just it roll work with it and figure out where can I put this so that it will straighten it out. Yeah. <clears throat> or throw it in the scrap pile and get another one. Yeah. <laughs> One addition we have in this setup is we've created a five inch jig for our drawers. So once we attach our top piece, we'll clamp this in a sandwich between here and that will give us proper spacing for our drawers and that way they're all uniform. Yeah, we want them all exactly the same so that they look the same so we can have all the faces made exactly the same height. Mm -hmm. Obviously the width is gonna vary to the width of the cabinet. And so we can keep repeating our, our, our process with this same thing. And They'll be the same. Yep. All right, let's start screwing it together. Yeah, one thing, we made five inch drawers, five inch depth. Five inch Five depth. inch opening. Opening, right. Um, I think you can go just slightly over four because our drawers are actually four. Our but actual if, drawer sides are four inches. Yeah, and it gives you more cabinet space on the bottom, but then that drawer is like right at that cabinet. When you open it, it's dragging. So there's, there's no room to reach into that drawer. Getting that extra inch, just giving you a little bit of space in that drawer. I know you've all probably got junk drawers in the kitchen especially. Uh, it's nice to have that little extra space. And it helps. You can sacrifice a little bit out of the bottom. Usually yeah. you don't fill the bottom anyway. You stack a few things on the bottom and then in the shelf in the back on the bottom. And you know, it's, you're not gonna miss that no, one, that one inch. No, not a problem. Yeah. All right, we're gonna start with the top, work our way down. Yep. So let's take these out, get rid of one of these. We're going to spin this like that. We can do it. Okay, for starters, we use this pinhole jig clamp from Craig. Locks it down perfect. Check your edge, make sure this is flush right here. Then we use a face frame clamp, again from Craig. Their Automax clamps really are nice. You set it and clamp and you're good to go. That helps hold that. Those two boards at the same level, you don't want one getting off from the other and you run the screws in, you're gonna have all wonky mess. <laughs> yeah, well, go ahead. You're good, you're at the better angle. Okay. Screw one side in. When you hear that you know it's time to stop drilling. You don't wanna yep. come out the front. Take the pin clamp out. And there we go. There you go. We're done. That's it. Let's go home. Oh, we are home. <laughs> now, we got to get this side. Nope. <laughs> He's trying to put a style. I mean, a rail is a style. I ain't real bright. It happens. We all have those moments. Yep. Nail it. Little booger on the wood right there. Okay. Okay, now comes the drawer jig. Snug fit. There we go. Perfect. Okay, now we generally put it whatever end we're working on. That way you ensure that that end's pretty straight. A nice quick grip would be good here, but our quick grips are about two inches too short. They jump. So, we have to use this bar clamp and make it work. Gets the job done. Okay. Yeah, boy. It helps if you get the board close when you put this clamp on, so that when you put that clamp on, it doesn't have much uh, to we do. We like clamps. Yeah, we're clampy. <laughs> we're very clampy. There you go. He's letting me play with the drill today. I try to be nice. Yeah. He taught me to share when I was younger. No, I didn't. He's very selfish with everything. Like the tractor, you never let me drive the tractor. Yeah, well, there are special circumstances. He's a big bully. Slide Good. that down, okay. Spin it to win it. Yup. Nail it. Thanks, Ethan. Oh, 
There you go. Beautiful. Now that drawer is, that slot is the same as all the others because we use that same block. Yep. Perfect. Now, let's run the bottom in here. Ready? Okay. Oop. The square you have that thing, when you squeeze that clamp, the better off you're going to be. It'll already be there. Yeah. That's pretty nice, but hold on a second. Okay. You know me, El Pico. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Whoop, I already got a screw in there. And there you have it. Face frame, ready to go. Square, straight, pretty. There's a lot of different ways you can build a face frame and build cabinets, but I can tell you this Craig system is working for us. It works really well. It's quick, it's easy. It, it makes uh, complicated work simple. Yeah. You get your cut straight and get those saws set up. You yep. gotta tune them things up and get everything square and perpendicular. 90 degrees is 90 degrees. Yeah, I mean this stuff is fitting beautifully. Every, every frame, every cabinet we put together. We started building the cabinets. The first couple were like, man, these things are gonna be all over the place. This stuff can't possibly be this good. And then as we got them built, we're like, they're turning out square. Yeah, when we started throwing everything together, it worked out. Yeah, and then when we started putting these face frames together and walked in there and stuck it up against the cabinet, we're like, holy crap, it fits. Yeah, <laughs> it works. <laughs> yeah, they work. Having never built cabinets like this before, we were unsure of what's going to happen. You know, it just, we didn't know. Yeah, so, worked out great. All right, well, that's it. Uh, we just got to assemble a few more bottom face frames, and then we'll be working on the top face frames, and then we'll get to installing them, and then finally get to sanding and painting. Paint them cabinets and get them stuck in there. That's going to be nice. We were going to build the cabinet doors for these, and we probably will in our house eventually. But there's a guy that for $19, you can get MDF cabinet doors. They don't shrink. They don't crack. They don't warp, generally speaking. Yeah. Uh, and we built good, solid cabinets. The doors are going to be painted. It doesn't matter. And that MDF is good, solid stuff. Yeah. Uh, that's what we're going to make our doors, or use it for our doors. At 19 yeah. bucks a piece, we can get this job done. We've got to get, get over on that property and get to building our houses. Yes, we do. Yeah, and, and the nice thing about that is if you, if you build your doors, then you've got the uh, back panel can move around a little bit over time, and you've got the edges that when you paint, there could be cracks, and you've got a caulk and whatnot. With these MDF doors, it's one solid piece. And these CNC's out in the middle, so yeah. you get a shaker-style door, but it's all one solid piece. And, and, uh, and doors up to what two feet or nineteen dollars and doors over that are twenty one dollars i mean yeah. you can't beat that and then for a dollar a piece he'll drill the cups for the uh hinges in it too right it's, it's simplifies I mean, it and, and um mdf doesn't warp like i said um and they look it's not like some of the junk you see out there in some yeah. of these uh big box stores this quality stuff he yeah. does a quality job and he uses there's a couple different grades of mdf this is good stuff it's not that cheap fuzzy stuff yeah. it looks good it's smooth you think it's wood you'll when we get them in we'll show you they're really well done yeah all right have okay. a good one guys see you next time